Hi guys, uh, in the last video we created version 1 of our web app which now has drop downs for the units so a user does not have to input any more any units anymore he just picks he or she picks the right entry from the drop down and can then convert very easily so that's settled uh, another thing which i would like to improve actually there are a couple of things first of all i was thinking like if i let me just copy the link and if I open up a new instance of this uh, of this web app, um, I don't like that. I prefer. I mean, if I if I if I go to the let's let's go to to our uh, model, which is uh, in Google uh, convert units, and we get it here. And you see, um, I didn't input anything, and it immediately takes one to that and just picks a unit and I would like it I would like ours to do the same thing to have some initial value let's say one and have some initial conversion let's say I don't know kilometer to mile and have that and then the user can then choose whatever whatever he um, he, he wants so how do I go about that? That's the first thing that's bothering me. And the second thing is, um, this here, um, I, what I don't like about that is now we know that uh, the application is calling a function and this function is calling a database. And in this database, we have all our conversion factors. Now, what if they get, what if this database is Get, or this database gets extended, you know, with some new dimensions. I wouldn't be aware of them. Or put it another way, I would have to change my lists here. Something I don't want to do. I would like it to automatically get those new units should the database be uh, extended with some new units. So how do I do that? So these are two issues which I like to settle. And let's start first of all with... Um, with the with the initial values, which is basically having having initial value. Well, that can be easily done. Um, here we have i value. We said if if there's no inputs from the user, then i value and from unit and so on are all empty. Well, why not just put something in one if there's nothing, and here kilometer if it's if it's empty, and here mile if the user has no inputs. Now. Once we have that, then that negates or makes this redundant because we're never going to have anything empty. We're always going to have something like that. So basically here, I can basically just, uh, let's comment this out. And then basically user inputs and conversion outputs are always working, regardless whether the user input anything or if not, well, then takes these values. All right, let's save it. Let's try it out. Uh, close that. Close that. Uh, let's create a new instance. And you see immediately it did this calculation. Now I can just proceed and do whatever I like and just put any numbers I like and it just works. Okay, so that's one matter saddle. Now we come to the other matter, which is basically this here. Now this has to be changed in the in the in the function itself. That means we have to go in the function itself. So uh, this is our function convert units, and and we have here everything uh, we've worked in the previous videos. Even in the in a couple of videos ago, we just had it output just the converted value and now what we want is basically let me just open the database so here's our database and here are our from units to units and their conversion factors and I would like to have my drop down created from this and 
should anybody then change or extend anything here, then my dropdown in my app would reflect that or should reflect that. Now, how do we go about these things? Well, there are two sides of the issue. First of all, let me maximize that. We have to do, we have basically to do the same thing we did over here. We have to hit the database with a select and then get that and then create a list out of that and have the function output that list. So I have multiple steps. First of all, call the database with a certain select, which allows us to get just the, the dimensions we need. And then we convert that in a list or tuple or whatever you want. And then we have the function output that. And once the function outputs that, then our web application can take that and then do the same thing. So basically, uh, what is that? Is that the HTML file? I don't need that anymore. No. So what I need is basically that this list, where is it? This list should not be done here, but this list should then come from the database. And then all that work remains unchanged. It's just that the source of that would be the database and not this. Okay. So we better get started. And the first thing is, uh, let me let me do some copy in here. And let's go over here. Oops. So let's paste it here. And we have a database cursor, it's a connection. Now that's gonna be changed. And that, let's call that from or found from units. Right, and now what kind of select do we need to get that? We don't, definitely don't need the where. Uh, or let, let's first go in the database and create our select there so we can see how it works. Uh, I just need select to select convert from and I don't need to do any where's. So let's go select, uh, what's the field called? Uh, convert from, so basically convert from, and then from table name is conversion factors. Right, and semicolon. That's all what we need, and run. Uh, have I done a mistake? Oh yeah, I've got a curly brace up here. Right, remove that, and we have, there we go. Now we should, no such column, convert from. I got I got, a, I got a curly braces here as well. Okay, let's go take it like this now, that should work. Right, now we have all those dimensions, but the problem is they're getting repeated multiple times. So like you see like kilometer and then again kilometer, again, how do I, how do I uh, stop this repetition with SQL? There's a, you use a, 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 a different a word which is called distinct. This gives you just gives you each value just once. And if I run that, now I got every dimension just once. No dimensions repeated. Because remember, our problem here that each dimension is being repeated multiple times because we're converting once nautical miles to nautical miles. Then at some other point, we're converting nautical miles to inches and so on. So in both, in both, I have each dimension repeated multiple times. How do I avoid that? Well, with a distinct statement. Now, and this is exactly the SQL we have to send. So just, and we don't need anywhere because we need all dimensions. So I just copy that. Go back to my Python code. Just paste that select in here. And that's it. And then I have that. And now what I got to do is basically generate a, um, a, a, a list with those from units. So let's create an empty list. All right. 
Right, so we have that. So now we go four. And now four, uh, let's call it I. In range len. And now what 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 the variable are we going through? Because remember, when you call a database, you're getting a list of tuples. Right? So and go. Well, let me put it to you. Let, let's do it differently so you can see what I mean. Uh, let me comment this stuff out. Initially, we don't need that. And let's add here another item in our dictionary. Right. So, and let's call that. Um, from units and let's let's go like this and create a variable called from units which is wait a minute let me just let me just copy that uh, from units is equal to found from units okay and then we're gonna have here from units Right, so now we're initially, we're just gonna output what, whatever we get from the database. And let's, let's see in our web app what we're getting. Let's go back to our web app. Right, and let's go back to my Python code. And in here at the bottom, we are going to print another statement. And we just don't need that and right i got everything right yeah and what, what was it called we called it uh from units right so let's print from units okay save and let's do a conversion and you see that is what we're getting out of the database let me let me just do a print some empty lines as well Right, save. So let's convert again. So you see, this is exactly what I'm getting out of the database. I'm getting a list of tuples, and I'd like to have it clean, so to have all that in a nice list, the way we have it uh, up here. And that's why I'm going through the loop here. And let's comment this stuff out. And go in here. And let's copy that, or cut that and go in here and from units is first of all an empty list and then oh and then oh i forgot colon and then here we start appending to that so form uh, from units not for form units dot append and now what well from found from units what do i need well obviously what i need is is for, let's go through kilometer to get kilometers i need this is this is the zeroth tuple so zero and from this zeroth tuple, I need the zeroth element. Now, with the next one, I would need the first element, the first tuple, but still the zeroth element. So this one here has got to be actually dynamic i, depending on where we are. And so, so we have i in form uh, uh, found from units. So we go. The first one, this is the zeroth tuple, so i is zero, but still the zeroth element. And the next one is the first element, which is basically i is equal to one, but still the zeroth element, and so on. So the zero is fixed because we're always taking the zeroth element of whatever tuple we are in, right? Okay, and that's it. And now, when we print 
from units, we should get the list we want. Convert. Oh. I know where the error is. It's probably those tabs, because I'm having a problem here with this. Um, so let's try it out. Yeah, and now you see I'm getting a clean list of all the dimensions I have. Mind you, I could not use a tuple here because if I had created a tuple, I would get an error because I cannot append to that tuple uh, by that loop. And I need to loop for me to create a clean uh, uh, list of, of whatever the database gave up. Okay, so that's why I have to create a list here. Right, now we have it and it's outputting that as well. Uh, we might as well create the two units. And you can see I just copied and pasted the same code down here. I just changed froms to two. And basically, it's exactly the same work. And now our function gives out two more values in that dictionary. One is the from units, one is the two units. And both of them are lists. And we're going to use these lists in our, as, 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 the, as the basis of our dropdown and not something we typed in Python. Okay. So we go back to our Python code. Let's first of all test if everything is working fine. Convert. Yep, still working fine. So now we go back here. <clears throat> and now, instead of this, well, we have your conversion outputs is already calling the function. So we all we remove that thing. Let me just maximize that. Remove it all. I don't need that. What I need is basically down here, this one. And I don't need that as well. Right. Go back up here. And so basically from units is conversion outputs, but we only need the from units. And same thing for the two units. Just delete all that. And conversion outputs two units so we just changed the source of the list now we're calling conversion outputs to get us those from and two units which in turn calls does all this uh, sql calls the database puts it back and then spits these these lists out uh, as part of that dictionary and then after that once we have those lists then the drop downs get created but now the dropdowns are getting created out of entries in the database, which if the database is extended or let's say reduced, that will be reflected in those dropdowns. Those dropdowns are always up to date. Save it, go, and then let's try it out. Convert, and it works. And it works as previously, no difference, with the, the only difference being now that we as developers know that those entries are coming from a database and they're always up to date. And if the database, like I said, is extended or reduced and so on, your drop downs will be automatically extended or reduced. You as a, as a, as a, again, as a chassis guy would not have to worry about that stuff. You don't have to worry about extending your list or reducing it and so on. You don't worry about that. You see, and that's, that's again here, you see how the development is taking place. We as chassis people needed those from and to units in a drop down we needed the, the that engine to spit these out so the engine guy then modified that function and had those two required uh, things uh, added to the outputs and now and you see here again the big advantage of having a dictionary as an output you can always extend it and everybody each chassis guy can take whatever he needs out of that engine and then here we have we have our from and to units just change the source and basically the rest of the work is, is still the same. And now our application is now in version two, and now it just works perfectly. And uh, in the next video, we'll see how to improve that even further.